Hello, this is Vampire. Uh, I just started doing the uh, private lessons again, so uh, this is not an advertisement for that uh, because I'm still having trouble finding uh, a good safe location. The last thing I need is like five of us out there and then the police come or security gets called in and uh, I don't want to get into trouble or put my students in that kind of trouble either. Uh, but from the private lessons, it puts in a nice change of pace because now we're talking about uh, partner training instead of just uh, by yourself, which uh, that's what I do the most and that's what I'm most comfortable with. But uh, with partner type drills, everybody prefers partner drills over uh, solo exercises, okay, just training at home. It's so different, okay, you need to do both. Everyone just wants to go to class and just do partner drills, okay, that's, that's the easiest thing and they feel like it, they learn so much more. It's not the same stuff that you're learning, okay. Um, with partner drills, what you're doing is like heaven six type stuff, so you're going to meet sticks one, two, three, four, five, so you're actually feeling contact with the other person. And that's all nice and everything, and it is important. It is important to, to do that kind of training, okay? But if you don't practice the sticks by yourself at home, just doing it in the air, this is so, so important, guys. Uh, even training at home by yourself, people don't like to do it in the air. They like to do it against, uh, like, hitting a tree or something. That's important, too, but you can't overlook doing it in the air. This is, in boxing, they call it shadow boxing. This is so important. There's not a single world champion boxer who doesn't shadow box. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Throughout the history, every boxer has done their time doing shadow boxing. Every good boxer. Okay, so this is the same with the sticks. It's like, um, when you train with partners like this, I guess the easiest comparison that I could give you guys is like, uh, with a knife, okay, uh, it's like working on a target or something, okay, you're actually hitting and making contact with a target, that's very important, okay, but training at home by yourself in the air is like sharpening your knife, that is so important, if you don't do that, it doesn't matter how, how good your skills are, if you have a dull blade, it's not going to cut well, alright, so it's, it's that crucial is what I'm trying to say, uh, the next thing is uh, all right relaxing okay uh, one of the things that I noticed is people tense up the whole time they're grabbing the sticks and yeah because because it is partner drill and you are making contact all right uh, they tense up okay and when you tense up like that you're you're losing your fluidity okay you're losing your power actually transferring the the energy all right and I don't want to sound esoteric or anything but it's just physics, okay, and, and body mechanics, transferring from your foot to your hips to your shoulder, you know, and releasing that energy there, okay. That gets lost because you're flexing here too much. All the focus becomes this, and then now you're only doing arms, okay. It just becomes an arm-only movement. But if you use your whole body, it's also going to take you. See, I went off screen. See, it, it gives me proper footwork and it makes me attack at angles, okay, so uh, my advice to you guys is as you're doing stuff like if you do get to train with a partner, okay, and you are actually hitting, you got to find the right time to be uh, holding it very strong and you got to find the right time to be relaxed with the stick, okay, this is relaxed, I'm relaxed right now, but look, okay, it's not going to fly out of my hand, alright, see, this is relaxed, and within there, a fraction of a second, it's strong and then it goes back to relaxed, okay? So you need to have that uh, in there. Of course, that comes with time, but it's something that you should uh, deliberately think about, okay? When is the time where I'm going to, boom, make that impact and then go back to relaxed, okay? Go back to relax, or else you're going to cut off your own power, your, your own energy source. The next one is uh, vision. Uh, this one came about when we were doing the reverse Sinawali, okay, this one right here. When you're doing the reverse Sinawali like this, um, because it's a little bit trickier, most people don't have as much time with this one as with the Heaven 6. It's not as smooth, all right, and uh, because of it, it's harder. So people, and plus because the sticks are down here when you're doing the, the reverse Sinawali, people start to look at the sticks, okay, this is a... 
uh, something you definitely don't want to do in combat. Okay, you don't want to be looking at the sticks, all right? You got to be looking at the entire person. What I recommend is look at this line right here. I, I like to look at the line. I know traditionally in the Filipino martial arts, um, maybe a lot, I don't know exactly, but I know a lot of them like to look at the eyes, okay? But that might have to do with, because this is, um, back then they did the duels, all right? And they fought to the death and stuff like that, and their intimidation played a huge role. But uh, I don't recommend to do that once, the, the other person has the skill and you have the skill, you know, using intimidation and if the other person isn't afraid, then you're just wasting a, a ton of energy, okay? So I don't like to play that kind of game. I'm just here to do business, all right? So uh, I like to focus here on this line right here, okay? And, and that way, if they do look really, really scary, then you just pay attention to that and read their body. So you're not worried about getting psyched up or, or how scary the guy looks, all right? So uh, I, I do recommend that. Um, but so don't look at the sticks, like look at this line. And as you're doing it, of course, if you look at the sticks, it's easier to do this drill. It's easier to make sure that the sticks hit like right around here. You know, you can target it better. But that's the whole thing. Um, we're trying to not necessarily make it easier, we're trying to make it more combat realistic. Okay, so don't look at the sticks, all right? And in fact, another exercise to do is while you're doing it, look around and use peripheral vision. Okay, so I actually look off over there. Uh, we were doing this at night uh, outside in the parking lot, so I started looking at different areas, scoping to make sure that uh, you know we're, we were going to be safe. Okay, so that's one of the things you want to be doing. You want to use peripheral vision as you're trying to make the sticks hit properly. Of course, it is harder, but that's why it's practice. Anyway, um, thank you for watching, and uh, good luck with your training.